If you're feeling stuck or anxious about designing high-speed traces, you're not alone. And honestly, you're probably learning PCB design wrong. Most tutorials teach you how to draw traces, but they don't teach you enough about how to think like a system level PCB designer or pro hardware engineer. That's the real problem. Personally, I use Altium Designer because it lets me focus on high-speed layout and signal integrity, not just clicking buttons. Shout out to Altium for supporting this video. Link is in the description below so you can get a discount in Altium Designer. But pro PCB design doesn't have to take years. I've helped dozens of students go from zero, okay, complete zero, to interviewing at companies like Apple, Amazon, Lenovo, and getting hired at Garmin, Juniper Networks, and many more top company and in less than six months. And I'm going to walk you through that roadmap right now the key principles you need to learn first, and the exact kinds of PCB projects that'll get you hired. So here I made this ebook called The Mesh Method, PCB Design Breakthrough, how you can use the mesh method to design PCBs in six hours or 60 hours instead of six years. Basically what companies are looking for are, are you able to do PCB design trade-offs, not just build boards? It really doesn't matter how many boards you build. If you're not building the right boards with the right principles, you're not going to get hired. You're going to fail that interview. It happens time and time again. When people get in my mentorship, they say, hey, you were right, Kirsch. I, I didn't, I wasn't able to answer those certain questions and now I need mentorship. And I'm like, I told you, man, I, I'm telling you, you know, I don't rub it in your face, but I say, hey, you know, I'm just, I was trying to save you some time. So here's the framework that I would use. If I had to do it again, and it's literally what I do to coach and mentor people to get hired in record time at top PCB design companies within three to five months. All right. Always works. Here is the, well, hidden crisis in the ebook that I talk about in the electrical engineering education and the roadmap. I strongly recommend doing this. First, you want to get your physics foundations. I list that in my book here, right? The first thing you want to do is get designing for manufacturing experience and knowledge. So whatever resources you can find, like how copper traces are etched in the substrates, why the minimum trace widths and the spacings exist, not just make your trace width this or that thing. No, you need to know why and what are the manufacturing and mechanical limitations in fabricating your PCB and assembling the components. Okay. The next thing you're going to need is electromagnetism fundamentals. You need to learn the physics of electromagnetic compatibility, electrostatic discharge, crosstalk, radiated and conducted emissions. Yeah, I know. So we're getting into the physics, getting back into physics class, right? Then after that, once you know your EMC, then you get into your signal integrity. Now I've talked about this mesh method. Watch my other video that's going to explain the deeper concepts of why this is so important and how it's going to save you so many years like it has for my other mentees, my students, they work at Juniper Networks now, Garmin, they get interviewed by Apple, Amazon, they get offers, uh, and even at Intel, okay? You want to watch that video and finish watching this video as well. So you want to get your electromagnetism fundamental down pat. Then we get into signal integrity that rides on top of electromagnetism. Okay. Learn repair, return path design, transmission line theory. Yes. I know all these things and teach them. Okay. You don't work at Intel for nothing in hardware and PCB design. And then, then you need to know high speed digital design, clock distribution, timing analysis, eye diagrams, all that crazy stuff, next fixed, all that stuff. And then you're ready for power integrity and RF. Okay. So why is a physics per, physics first approach beats project-based learning? Really, you would need both, but you want to go into physics first because you'll learn rules without, I mean, well, with project-based learning, you'll learn rules and a lot of times without the proper context. Okay. Now I call this the math method. This is my proprietary method. If you see it anywhere, it's from Kirsch Mackey. I invented this. All right. Get that. And then the problem with only project-based learning is you can learn from your projects and then you can do your research on each of the decisions, but you're learning it in reverse, kind of. It takes longer, it takes years, and you're not guaranteed to do all the projects. Don't worry, I got you. If you're wondering what project am I supposed to do, I got you, keep watching, all right? That's the problem with project-based learning only. What you wanna do is read books. 
read PDFs. I know it's too, it's too theoretical, too analytical, whatever. I know you don't have to read the entire books just, but you just need enough to know the foundations. And I laid it out for you. Manufacturing, electromagnetic compatibility, signal integrity, high speed digital design, power integrity. That's all you need. And then RF. Okay. How this approach shrinks learning time is by eliminating redundant learning. Okay. You get certain aha moments. You're going to feel like after so many designs, you don't quite know what you're doing, but then by the time you're on your fifth design sp stack the right way, it's all going to click. And then suddenly you become more confident in PCB design. Now let's get into the kinds of projects you need to work on to make this all stick. The first kind of project you should do is a simple digital board, focus on DFM principles and then move on. Then you got power supply design, mixed signal board design, high speed digital interface project. So the first kind of project you want to work on is a simple digital PCB. After that, project number two should be a power supply design. A power supply design is critical to all printed circuit boards and all products. You need to be able to design for power. Project number three would be another mixed signal PCB where you're focusing on signal integrity. Then do a fourth project that is pretty complex that requires high speed digital design, some LPDDR4 chips on in the project. Even an FPGA, although FPGA is pretty insane for your first high speed digital project, but hey, it works. Then you want project five to be something more like an FPGA, really. Okay. So your project four would be a simple high speed board, USB 3.2 or whatever. Check out my video that I might have done on that. Project five, more like system on chip, system on module, computer on board. It's like a Beagle Bone Black. Uh, or uh, maybe an FPGA, but project six, definitely do FPGA. All right. So that's what you want to do. Increasing complexity, but after you've gained your foundations, this is the method that I use in my mentorship program that people pay thousands of dollars for. Now, this isn't everything in the mentorship. You're getting just the core thing. you get way more in the mentorship, which is why it works so fast. Like it in as short as 36 hours. I know that sounds like hokey poke. Sounds crazy. It works. Okay. It works. The results speak for themselves. Okay. So this is the strategy that I would take if I were you, if I'm self-learning printed circuit board design and need to move fast, it's going to take you, if you're taking your time, maybe three hours a week or weekend, then you're going to take about two to three years. Okay. But you're, you know, you'll be on the right path. This works every time. Uh, it's impossible to fail with this method or this approach. Or if you want to, you can spend some more time on it and reduce your time to getting ready for interviews and being confident in any PCB design you work on. And then you can cut that down to maybe six months, maybe 12 months. Usually when people are learning on their own with this approach, it takes them about a year to two years because they're just busy with life. But with me, if you want to get mentorship and you got, you know, a few thousand dollars lying around, I can get you up to speed in 36 to 60 hours. Results can vary. All right. So with that being said, this is the path I would take to become ready for professional PCB design. This is the stuff companies care about design for manufacturing, EMC, signal and integrity, EMI. Well, which is an EMC ESD, uh, understanding design trade-offs. You will see that DFX, all that stuff. That's what they test for. If you can't under, if you can't answer those questions, they do not care about what software tool, you know, they don't care about what, how many projects you've done. If you don't understand why you're choosing one capacitor package over another for inductive purposes, or you can't draw the impedance profile. Do you really think they care about the complexity of your projects or the number of projects you've done? They don't, they don't. Because what they want to know is regardless of the project that they give to you, can you make the right decisions? That's why you need to take a mesh method physics based approach to PCB design. Now I, this is, this is my method. Do whatever method you feel like works, but there is no way around it. There is no exception to this rule. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. 
and I will see you in the next video. Peace.